So please, Mike, welcome Chris Money! Well, I went to a Paul Kelly concert in my 30s and I took a Viagra instead of an Eki. <laughs> then he started singing. From little things, big things grow. From little things, big things grow. Anyway, uh, I was sitting in row four, seat C, and when that thing kicked in, I'm sure he was looking at me. Uh, so, Kelly, that's an Irish name, like Mooney, that's me. But the only problem is Mooney's got a double meaning. In Greek, who knows what malaka means? Wanker, right? And the Greek word for envelope is fuck you all. But Mooney, oh Mooney. When my Greek partner and I got married, we were introduced as Mr. and Mrs. Vagina. Got worse for her, she's PhD, now it's Dr. Vagina. And that's not good, she's a psychologist, not a gynecologist. So, you know, I want to just uh, have a chat about my significantly older brother. He's just turned uh, 70. We've got a 15-year age gap. And he's a yachty. And like a lot of yachties, when they drink, well, the more they drink after a race, the better they did. And he's no exception. But we were brought up in family hotels. We had three of them. All my life, I was in a family hotel, living upstairs, going to school. It was our lifestyle. And uh, he ran one. And... I saw basically every type of drunk. You'd have your happy drunk, your aggro drunk, your sleazy drunk, and your loud drunk. I swear he didn't fit any of the categories, but quite often he'd be on the other side of the bar with the customers, getting into the sauce, and when he had a glaze on his, in his eyes, he had the most bizarre reaction to alcohol. He became the biggest bullshit artist I've ever encountered in my life. <laughs> and the trigger point for him was just a topic. I'll just give you an example. I said, uh, John, I went uh, horse riding on the weekend. He goes, I've got to channel him now. All right, horses. Well, uh, I went on a photo shoot uh, a few years back and uh, they chose me as the Marlboro Man. <laughs> now, for those young people here, the Marlboro Man back in the 70s, uh, for him, was uh, a worldwide campaign with a pretty good looking rooster uh, in a cowboy outfit sitting on a horse. And I can tell you now, my brother has never sat on a horse in his life. He's allergic to cats and horses. Next thing is, uh, well, he had an Austin Healey. An Austin Healey car in its day was the fastest production car in the world. So I thought I'd ask him about it. So how was the Austin Healey? Yeah, she had a bit of go and uh, Cops were chasing me, on, uh, chasing me down South Road one day and gave it a bit of stick and put a bit of distance in between us. And I thought, no, bugger it, I'll have a bit of fun. I brought him in closer. Just remembered. Back number plate wasn't on. They came right in just at the point where they thought they'd have me. And I just threw the handbrake and spun around and just said, see you later, boys. <laughs> And just finally, just, uh, you know, I'm my brother there, I, I said, uh, I, I went and saw Neil Diamond concert. He was fantastic. Oh, Neil Diamond. He, uh, he came into the pub last year. I said, well, what did he come into our pub for? Yes. I was looking for dinner and uh, I said, look, Neil, we're closed to the kitchen, but uh, I can't help your band, but uh, I'm happy to cook your sausages. <laughs> and uh, I said, did he like me? He said, oh, the best you ever had. And I said, uh, geez, that's fantastic, but I don't know what the hell Neil Diamond would have been doing looking for a, uh, a dinner in a family hotel in Malvern during a world tour, but the other doubtful thing is he was a vegan, so. But uh, back on to yachts, um, I've always loved a few names that I, you know, I catch a few names like Iona. Uh, there's a boat I sail on called Feral. And uh, my personal favourite is She Got the House. But, um, <laughs> yeah. So I had my own boat once and uh, it was called Avanti, which is the Italian word for, for go. 
And uh, I entered in my first Sydney to Hobart yacht race, which is in 1998. You might all know that one where the, the six people died. So uh, I was the skipper, but my brother always craved the glory. And he said, uh, he said to me, listen, Christopher, uh, sailing in the ocean is nothing like sailing in the bay. Uh, I think I'd better steer and start this one and, uh, because I'm the best steerer that you'll ever have the best steer that you'll ever have. And uh, then I'll choose some other guys to steer and they'll get us to Hobart. I said, fair enough. So we took off. He started the race. And it was just about to hit sunset. And we got word that the biggest storm in the yacht race's history was on its way. So, and then it hit. 79 knots across the deck, as we say, or in other sort of interpretations, that's 147 kilometer an hour winds. So two yachts sunk in that race, and out of the fleet of 140, less than half made it to Hobart. Quickly, 50 to 60 foot waves whipped up, and the guy steering the boat at the time said, this is insane shit, get me out of here, I'm done. <laughs> I'm down below with my brother at the time. And I said, John, you're on, show us how it's done. <laughs> Waves now getting up to 70 feet. He stuck his head out and had a look and said, I better rest up in case this uh, gets any worse. Let me, <laughs> let me know if it deteriorates. So I had to go up and take the wheel. And I took the wheel and I promise you I was fa facing mountainous seas of death. It was like going up the Big Dipper. And all I could think about at the time was Neil Diamond sausages. <laughs> Thank you, you've been great.